Uh Oh, you didn't think I was going to pass this one up. Oh, hell no. Special thank you to my guests, the Fellowship of Influencers, Chanel, Joel, and Kelsey for getting like more diversity. 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 Much more diversity. Being inclusive. Representative. Representation. Black elf. Female dwarf. Wow. Never saw people in my color. So amazing. Women in it. Women. More female representation. I wasn't represented. My disability. My queerness wasn't represented. My girl Galadriel. Yes. Yes. Hello, Galadriel. 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 I'm already yeah. obsessed. Cool. Stunning and beautiful. Corruption and manipulation. Manipulation. Corrupt people. Corrupt him. Be like, I can change him. She was like, and I was like, 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 and it's like, 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 literally, like, 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 some kind of like, 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 and like, and like, it's like, and it's like, 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 and like, like, oh, and I was like, 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 with like, where like, and he's like, yo, I'm gonna, he's like, yo, yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a ring right now. Yo, this tune is banging. It's Radio Lord of the Rings. Let's go. It's about to get lit like Mordor. Shut up. Shut up. Nerderotic.com. Isn't it crazy that Tolkien, his son, historians, scholars, artists, previous adapters, and fans have all gotten Tolkien wrong over the past few decades? And isn't it great and highly coincidental that once a trillion dollar corporation got the rights to Tolkien's work, a company that's big enough to own media outlets, control the flow of information, and own people's souls, that they just so happen to be the one organization to figure him out, along with the help, again coincidentally, with some scholars who might consider themselves activists and activists academics first at the end of the day Tolkien died in the 70s so it's up to us you know to Mm -hmm. basically step our game up and see how his works can respond through the world that they created to the challenges of today now I am no Tolkien scholar I don't have any degrees I also don't have any student debt. I've been kicked out of three high schools, but I did read The Silmarillion in prison. But if I was forced to put myself into a category, I would say super fan, along with my fellow super fans over at Amazon UK. Or are they? No. Okay. No, 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 no. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, let's let our super fans in this unlisted video introduce themselves. My name is Mr. Isla, and I'm here with the Fellowship of Influencers. Chanel, Joel, and Kelsey. I'm sorry, the Fellowship of Influencers. Now, before we get started breaking down probably the most cringe video I've ever seen and prepare for every muscle in your body to cringe, I went to all of these super fans' respective YouTube channels and searched Lord of the Rings, LOTR, and Tolkien. And because the YouTube search function absolutely sucks when it comes to channels, I did some more digging and found absolutely nothing. Yes, three videos came up and they didn't talk about Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion, or even Amazon's The Rings of Power. All right, three words to describe The Rings of Power. Teaser trailer, go. Okay, breathtaking. I literally didn't breathe. Well, we got our first breathtaking, but that really tells me nothing. I'm hoping we get a stunning later. And it's going to be so amazing. I also want to say representative because we're getting like more diversity within this series. Like we're seeing our first black elf. We're seeing the first female dwarf. So the first thing this super fan brings up is representation and the first black elf and the first black female dwarf. Listen, Amazon knows they're getting absolutely destroyed on this. The fan attacks through their willing and able partners in the access media and the shill content creators and the shill fan sites have not been enough to fight off a storm that we have not seen before. Both the UK and the American trailer have been ratioed with no end in sight and Amazon has been unlisting videos, including this one. (laughs) But the skullduggery does not end there. But wait, we have to have the black elf and black female dwarf mentioned one more time. We're introduced to the first black elf. Mm -hmm. We're introduced to the first uh, female dwarf. Of course, the black elf doesn't have a wig. He has a perfect haircut and the black dwarf doesn't have a beard. And quickly on the subject of female dwarves having 
beards, it appears that the Tolkien Gateway, which I referenced in a video right here, has changed their description, one that's been up for years. Originally, at the end, it said all dwarves had beards from the beginning of their lives. That has now been removed, and now they're saying in the War of the Jewels, all dwarves are described as having beards, including women. However, as published in the nature of Middle Earth, Tolkien later excluded female dwarves when listing who he imagined with beards, stating that all male dwarves had beards. I would like to remind you that The War of the Jewels is a book that was edited by Christopher Tolkien and published in 1994, and The Nature of Middle Earth was not edited by Christopher Tolkien, and it came out last year. And the key word there is excluded, and that's why they didn't put in a quote. Did he specifically say they don't? But Amazon is choosing to misinterpret it their way. Now, diversity, especially on screen as an actor, means a lot to me because growing up, I hardly had that, you know, watching TV and watching a lot of films and stuff. Never saw people of my color. You're a liar. So, from these super fans, we've heard a lot about representation, diversity, and inclusion, but we haven't heard things like, hey, I really want to see Kirdin the Shipwright, or Celeborn, or Celebrimbor, or Gilgalad. Now, I'm not the only one to bring this up, including my good friend Ryan Kinnell from RK Outpost. Lord of the Rings is already accessible. That's why they're super fans. It's one of the most accessible stories ever. It's one of the best-selling books ever ever translated into 38 languages, including Arabic, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Marathi. Tolkien's work was always about being inclusive. I mean, we see it through the fellowship, like a bunch of people from different backgrounds coming together. I couldn't agree with you more with that last bit, but it's not just different backgrounds. Dwarves are very different from elves who are very different from Numenorians who are very different from men who are very different from hobbits, all with real differences and not just with looks in strength agility, ability, wisdom, and lifespan. It's just gonna mean so much to like me personally because it's getting that representation in middle earth. Now, this isn't the only contradiction we're gonna get from a super fan who always loved this story, but is finally getting the representation they were always missing in it. Hey, there's someone that looks just like me. It just fills me with a lot of hope for like the future of the Rings of Power and seeing like much more diversity being included as well. So I'm getting the one thing that he's excited about is diversity and more diversity. Activism has ruined fandom along with superficial narcissism. I can tell you right now, nobody gives a crap about seeing themselves in a story that sucks, including kids. In the original film series, which I absolutely adored, but there are not many women in it. Yep, you're right. And apparently that didn't stop any women, including yourself, from reading it. The three women who are in it never speak to one another. Mm -hmm. I don't really. Yeah. Look at these massive super fans. We are three minutes and 38 seconds into this video, and we have only heard one one name from the story Sauron, but we have heard breathtaking representative, first female dwarf, first black elf, first black elf again, first black female dwarf again, diversity, diversity being explored. Tolkien was always about inclusivity, representation, much more diversity, not many women, they don't talk to each other, more female representation. <laughs> Like, as you said, like growing up, like I was still excited about being um, an elf or a hobbit and joining in with it, even though I wasn't represented as like. You just said it yourself. You were perfectly fine pretending as a kid, I hope, to be a hobbit or an elf, and you were only limited by your imagination. Let me tell you a little story. We used to play superheroes as kids, and sometimes I'd play Black Panther, and other times I'd play the Silver Surfer. Now, I'm not really an alien with my balls encased in silver that knows how to surf, but I did it anyway. Even with like my disability mm. or my queerness wasn't represented. Now, I did hear some scuttlebutt that there might be some actual LGBTQ plus representation in the works of Tolkien, which, <laughs> uh, but on the note of not having your disability represented, well, actually it was in the Peter Jackson films. Look at Gothmog. He's got a disability and he's commanding legions. It makes me so happy, it makes my heart warm. Like, gonna be seeing younger people to the truth. Gonna be seeing younger people to the truth? 
What? They keep invoking kids and children who I can promise you will not give a crap about this when we all know who they're really talking about themselves. Like Sauron basically like helps forge the rings and so I think um, they start making like some initial rings that like don't have much power so. But the yeah. you describe it, it sounds like Sauron's in like a ring store. Like, <laughs> 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 like, I'm a size one. One of those. One of those. One doesn't fit. Um, <laughs> Give me your theories of who you might have seen in the teaser trailer. I've seen a lot of talking about my girl Galadriel. Yeah, yes. hello Galadriel. Hey, at least they finally brought up a name. And of course, they're going to want to watch Warrior Galadriel. And this is where I'm going to bring up intersectional feminism, something that we've seen in practically everything over the last few years. And I say this because they haven't brought up again Celeborn, her husband, who she's with through the second age, and we haven't seen a glimpse of him. We don't know who's playing him because they've de-emphasized him, and I'm guessing he will be diminished, greatly diminished, because their relationship would be heteronormative. That part in the trailer, which come around waterfall with the knife and like, yes. Which we can suspect now comes from possibly the first two episodes, which might be the history of Middle Earth, and that might be the flight of the Noldor and them crossing the Frost Fangs or climbing them. The way we've seen her in the movies, she's been very like flowy, yeah, with her, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so green, she's not doing much. Ah, oh, sure, not doing much, and we're talking about the films here. She helped the White Council, she helped fight off Sauron, she helped the Fellowship. They wouldn't have made it without her. So excited to just see this younger version of yeah. her, and there's so much. Who knows, man? She would have went to, might have gone to school. Glad you were in detention. <laughs> no magic in the class. I mean, I want her dagger. It, it looks very cool. stunning and beautiful. <sighs> this is the state of modern fandom. And listen, anybody can be a fan as long as they want to be a fan. But if you need to fundamentally change something to like it, then you're not a fan. And I'm perfectly fine with gatekeeping activists. I want to know whose the hand was at the end. Yeah, that the was Hobbit. interesting, because it was a little hand, I think that was a Hobbit. The Hobbit? <laughs> Maybe like some ancestor of the Baggins or something. Yeah. Always those Bagginses getting into trouble. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think he called it. I think Miss Brandyfoot will end up being a descendant to Bilbo and Frodo. We get to see Sauron. Like Maybe he falls in love. People are going to fall in love with him and be like, I can change him. <laughs> <laughs> We all love a bad boy. Yeah, I really can't wait for people to ship Sauron and kill a Brimbor. Hashtag Sauron Brimbor. Every time I look at something, it looks like it could be improved. You know, there's something wrong with it. Now, that was obviously in reference to something else, but it's also obviously what they think they are doing. They think they are improving on Tolkien, the man who thought about this story his entire life. Remember this from Lindsay Weber, the executive producer of The Rings of Power and former Bad Reboot employee. It felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. In terms of the thematic material, we didn't want to put any of our own baggage. I mean, we had no interest in putting our messages in, into this movie, but we thought that we should honor Tolkien by putting his messages into it. And we thought he cared about things. We, you know, he, you know, the countryside and the, and the, and, and, and the rise of evil, and and he he cared passionately about certain issues. And we thought what we should do to honor him is to make sure that 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 his what he cared about ends up in the movie. That's what we tried to do. Those prophetic words from Peter Jackson. 20 years ago are just as applicable now as they were then and they are echoed in this epic comment section. I'm sure these influencers opinion of the trailer is not affected by being invited by Amazon. Totally genuine reactions. Inviting people to react to your marketing is such cringe. Hope this show fails and drags this studio to the deeps of Moria. I did not expect this at all. This is them taking a stance and naming the video super fans as if to mock the idea of a Tolkien reader. Wow, I'm stunned. They're actually warning us that this is going to get worse from Clown of the Times. And this feels like one of those real people, not actors, wink, wink commercials. And Jason B, I'm just going to read the first part here. So basically to gaslight fans, you all host a panel of influencers calling them super fans, despite them having no involvement in the Tolkien community or fellowship. You could have chosen scholars. I wouldn't have. Tolkien Society members, maybe not. Actual fan club sites, okay. But no, you all saw how bad the backlash was, and now you're pretending like people actually like this to save face. 
Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. Amazon is mocking millions of Lord of the Rings fans. It's so disgusting and they are paying for it. When representation is more important than story, you know it's the end of the line for whatever franchise it happens to. Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, etc. Get woke, go Bro. Leave it to the Lord of the Rings fandom to create a white pill moment. And yes, that's exactly what this is. People are finally fed up again from all make shapes and sizes and that's inspiring. They fought off multiple fan attacks easily. Videos have been unlisted by Amazon. The Amazon UK trailer is ratioed. The American trailer is ratioed. And this cringe video ended up proving all of our points that Lord of the Rings was already inclusive and accessible. And the one thing that has absolutely ruined fandom, without a doubt, again, is activism. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com, please subscribe.